Today we're going to be looking at multiplication and division. We will start by multiplying and dividing by 10, 100 and 1000. We can use the place value chart to help us multiply and divide by 10, 100 and 1000. This will help us see how the digits increase or decrease in value. Now, to help us remember how many places we need to move on the place value chart, we can look at the number of zeros. When we are multiplying by 10, we will move one place on the place value chart. When we're multiplying by 100, we will move two places on the place value chart. When we're multiplying by 1000, we will move three places on the place value chart. Let's look at that in action. So here we have 4.2 and we are multiplying by 10. So our four units will become 10 times bigger. So we'll move one place on the place value chart. So our four units will move into the tens column. Our two tenths will move into the units column. So 4.2 multiplied by 10 equals 42. Notice we didn't have anything after the decimal. So in the answer, we didn't need to write the decimal. When we're multiplying by 100, we will move two places on the place value chart. So here we have 3.12. Because we're multiplying by 100, we have moved our 3, 1, 2 places. 3 times 100 becomes 300. 1 tenth, move two places, becomes 1 tenth. And 2 hundredths, moved two places becomes two units. 3.12 times 100 becomes 312. Again, we don't have anything after the decimal, so we do not need to include it in the answer. Now we will multiply by 1,000. We will become 1,000 times bigger, which will mean that each digit will move three places on the place value chart. So our four will move one, two, three places into the tens column. We now don't have any units, so we will show that by placing a zero in the units column. So 0 0.04 times 1,000 will equal 40. When we are dividing by 10, 100, and 1,000, we follow the same process, but of course the value is now becoming smaller. So we will move to the right. And if we're dividing by 10, we will move one place to the right, if we're moving, dividing by 100, we will move two places to the right. And if we're dividing by 1,000, we will move three places to the right. Let's look at that in action. So what is 24 divided by 10? Well, here I have two tens. If I divide my two tens by 10, I will move one place on the place value chart, and I will now have two units. Here I have four units. If I divide those four units by 10, they will now become four tenths, so I've moved one place on the place value chart into the tenths column. So 24 divided by 10 is 2.4. Now the decimal is very important here because it's the decimal that is showing us that our units have become tenths. When I divide by 100, I move two places on the place value chart. 700 divided by 100 is seven. I have moved one, two places, and then each of the digits will do the same. So I have 723 divided by 100 is 7.23. When I divide by a thousand, I will move three places on the place value chart. Six thousand divided by a thousand will equal six. I have moved one, two, three places, and all the digits afterwards will move three places as well. So my final answer is 6.51. Notice when I've written the answer, I haven't included the zero. I don't need to write it because it is after the decimal point and it holds no value. We're now going to look at how to multiply a two and a three digit number by a one digit number. So here we have 48 times six, and we have laid it out into the correct place onto the place value chart. Now, just like column addition and subtraction, we're going to start with the digits in the ones. So six times eight or eight times six equals 48. 
Since 4 is in the tens column and 8 is in the ones column, I have to remember to keep my place value. So I will place my four tens in my tens column and my eight units in my ones column. Then I will move on to multiplying my four tens by six. So four tens multiplied by six equals 240. But I can't forget to add on my four tens from previously. So 240 add 40 would equal 280, and I already had eight in the units. So 48 multiplied by six equals 288. Here we have eight times 44. So again, I will place the larger number at the top and what I'm multiplying underneath. So first of all, I will start with the units and eight times four will give me 32. So this is three tens, so it goes into the tens column. Now, when I am multiplying by 40, again, four tens times eight units will equal 320, but I need to add on my three tens from before, so that will give me 350. When I am multiplying a number by a two digit number, I will need to set it out like this. So I'll write the larger number at the top and then what I'm multiplying by underneath. I will start off by multiplying by the units and I will follow the same process as before, where I will do six times seven, which will give me 42. Six times zero will give me zero. I had four in my tens column already, so I will add that into my tens column. Six times two will give me 12, or six times 200 is 1,200, so we'll place that. And then finally, six times one will give me 6,000. I already had 1,000, so I will add that, so I've now got 7,000. Then I will move on to multiplying in my, by my three tens. So I'm multiplying by three tens, so I'm going to place a zero into this column first of all, and then I will do three times seven. So three times seven will give me 21. Three times zero will give me zero. I will add my two, which will give me two. And three times two will give me six. And three times one will give me three. My final stage is to add my multiplication by six and my multiplication by 30 together to reach the final answer. Let's look at dividing. When we're dividing, we're going to use the bus stop method. So the number that you are dividing by goes outside of the bus stop, whilst a larger number goes inside. So here we have 84 and I'm dividing by four. So I will look at by tens column. So how many groups of four can I get into eight? Well, I can get two in, so we'll place two above. Then I will look at my units column. How many groups of four can I get into four? Well, that's one group, so that will be placed above as well. So 84 divided by four will give me 21. Right, let's look at a much larger number this time. So this time I have 7,580 and I'm dividing by five. Again, the number I'm dividing by goes outside of the bus stop and the larger number goes inside of the bus stop. So first of all, how many groups of five can I get into seven? Well, I can get one group, so we'll write one above, but I've got two left over, so I will carry that over. So now I'm going to look at how many groups of five can I get into 25, which will be exactly five. I'll move on to my next column, into the tens column. How many groups of five can I get into eight? And that will be one, and this time I will have three left over. So how many groups of five can I get into 30? And that would be six. You can now either answer the questions in your answer booklet or you can answer them from the screen here.